For more incredible action figures and collectibles, including the one seen in this review, check out Lindsay's Toy Room at www.lindsaystoyroom.com. <laughs> Hello YouTube and welcome to Turmoil in the Toy Box. I'm your host Aaron Hauser and today we're going to be reviewing the NECA Godzilla Classic Series 1 1994 Godzilla figure. This is a really cool piece that I picked up from Lindsay's Toy Room at lindsaystoyroom.com for $18.99 plus shipping and handling. And uh, this guy is a real testament to NECA's love and appreciation for the original Godzilla films. This guy is incredibly well detailed and uh, has a ton of articulation to him, surprisingly. And I was just really excited that they actually started off this series with my favorite Godzilla. Because this is this is the one that I grew up with, with uh, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Destroya and um, Godzilla vs. Mothra and uh, King Ghidorah, the 90s versions. And um, they did a great job just showcasing the design and uh, feel of this specific Godzilla suit in this sculpt. So taking a look at the articulation, he has articulation in the shoulders, in the upper arm, elbows, wrists, uh, surprise articulation in the hand, which is really nice. And then he's got articulation in the mid torso section, in the hips, in the knees, very tight joints at the knees articulation in the ankles, in the tail, at the base of the tail, points here, here, and here. And then like the uh, 2014 Godzilla figure, uh, this comes separately in the box, this last portion of the tail, and features a wire that runs along uh, the inside so that you can actually bend it and position it as you want. And then of course he has articulation at the base of the neck and at the base of the head there. And then some really nice jaw articulation, and uh, by really nice I mean this isn't a loose jaw, so you can you can position it however you want, and it will hold that position without kind of just dropping open, which I've had issues with with uh, some other Godzilla figures in the past. So very nice there. The head sculpt is flawless. They did a great job capturing uh, the look of this the suit and uh, the animatronics that are used in uh, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. The eyes look really nice, the mouth, the coloring, the paint, everything looks really, really on point. And uh, on the back here we've got the spikes, and these are sort of a rubbery plastic, which is really nice, so you don't have to worry about these snapping off at all. They're very flexible. And uh, the paint on the back looks really nice as well. And I really like that um, the spikes on the top are separate from the bottom and the tail, so you can you can rotate these uh, without having to worry about you know bending or snapping any of the the spines on his back, which is nice. So, um, yeah, as far as accessories, he doesn't come with any, but I would love to see them do sort of an accessories pack for the NECA Godzilla figures, so that you can have you know the atomic breath and stuff. Um, for display, which would look really, really cool. Um, and on that note, to give you kind of an idea of what he looks like uh, next to the SH Monster Arts figures, here he is next to another one of the 90s Godzilla figures. And as you can see, the NECA one is slightly taller, and uh, some of the colors are a bit different. You have more of kind of a glossy look to the uh, NECA version, whereas this is more of a like a hard sort of charcoal color. And then um, the fins seem to be a bit brighter on uh, the NECA Godzilla than they are on the SH Monster Arts version. Um, as far as articulation differences, uh, the knees are a bit different and the way that the tail is jointed on the SH Monster Arts version is very different as well. But I think I like the NECA approach better because it's more flexible um, as far as uh, durability for the spines and everything, the SH Monster Arts one is very rigid, and I'd be very worried about um, pieces snapping off on this. Now, um, the other big difference is, you know, this one is way more affordable. The NECA version does a great job of capturing the look and feel of the uh, 94 Godzilla just as well as the SH Monster Arts version does. Now, like I noted, there are very 
very subtle differences to the two, um, mostly in color and um, minor articulation points. Um, but overall, I think they are. This is a very comparable figure um, to the SH Monster Arts version. Um, like I said, though, I would love to see them actually do, you know, an accessory pack with the um, the Atomic Breath, like they do with the SH Monster Arts version. And just to note, this is the ver this is the uh, accessory that comes with uh, the SH Monster Arts Godzilla, not with the NECA version. Um, just so people aren't like, hey, where the hell did you get that? Um, but overall, this is a very, very well done figure, and I'm really excited to see what else they release for the Godzilla Classics line. I know they mentioned possibly doing um, the original Godzilla from the very, very first film, and uh, they do have a uh, second figure for the Series 1 that is going to be released soon, which is the uh, 1985 Godzilla from Return of Godzilla. And uh, they did do some updates to the sculpt that they revealed at Comic-Con, uh, which make it look a lot sharper um, than the original promotional pics showed. But overall, I'm really impressed with uh, what they've shown for the series so far. Uh, this figure really does a great job of showcasing uh, their passion for the Godzilla films. And uh, yeah, I'm just really, really excited to see what else they do with this line. So... But yeah, that's about it for this review. If you have any questions about the figure, just leave them in the comments below. And feel free to check out some of my other reviews, including reviews that I've done this summer on the 2014 Godzilla, both the 7-inch and the 12-inch tall versions from NECA. So that's about it. Thanks for watching.